deep in the plainscape, four monkeys are missing. They just watch the world die. One's a capuchin, one was a blue monkey. Devil babbles, armless chimpanzee. Time's running out for these four awful guys. Soon this show will end. Metal and gray coming down from the skies. They'll need a God said. It's the Chanty Finale. Take the bite of bones. Chanty Finale. Chanty Finale. It's supposed to be a fishing trip. Chanty Finale. Every day we fish it. Chanty Finale. If we have a new uh, character ever introduced, can you describe him as like pro Jared like? <laughs> Sure. What's oh, so you can do that? so you can do pro Jared, but you can't do freakishly large and old mortician or Greg the Groovy Gorilla. All right, that, that's well. Fair. That you can like... do those too, but just describe them as pro Jared. Like no, Gabe, the show is like... ending. We don't have any new characters. That seems that's like, like... I kind of hate Gabe. It's like three more episodes. The show's if, ending. If I had to guess what was going on here, I'd say you hate Gabe. <laughs> we have like thirty more episodes. Yeah, the show is ending. There's 30 more episodes. We've only got knowing, knowing us, what, it's quite possible. Welcome to the final J at the arc. There's only 30 more episodes. Say goodbye, <laughs> everyone. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Jungles and Dragons. I'm Harrison. This is Ethan. Hey, everybody. It's me, Ethan. I play Paul Benis, the Paladinite Chimp. And uh, today's normal fact is this: if um um well um <laughs> if uh, Paul Benis had a million smackaroos, uh, million. ten million. A hundred million, million smackaroos, and you know, take that in whatever currency you'd like. Um, I think Paul Benis would uh would get plastic surgery to look pro Jared like. Uh, what? <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> he can say whatever he wants. He's the big shot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, Is pro I'm Jared the like the biggest celebrity Paul Benis can imagine? <laughs> <laughs> no, he just doesn't want to be bothered anymore. So if he looks like Pro Jared, nobody will bother him. <laughs> I feel like that'd be kind of the opposite thing. No, that is rock see solid. Happens, I feel like it's kind of opposite. <laughs> rock solid logic. Hey, August, who spoons Rango? What would he do if he had a million to a hundred million dollars? Well, spoons Rango is a pallet of night champ, wizard, uh, blue monkey, and if he had a hundred million dollars, donate it all to charity. To beautiful, beautiful, beautiful charity for a beautiful woman factory. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the charity for beautiful women. Beautiful woman factory. <laughs> he would. He, <laughs> yes, it's, it's finally time someone spoke up about this issue. And anyway, he also, it also <laughs> want um. He's, he'll do the movie, but he wants to dance and he wants to have big hands. And so he'd probably get, get plastic uh, surgery to have Tropic big hands. Thunder, <laughs> Tropic Thunder reference. He'd probably have big hands. <laughs> you guys know that story where Tom Cruise is like, I'll be in this movie, but you gotta give me big hands. I want to dance and I want to have big hands. He's like, okay. And Robert Downey Jr. was like, I'll be in this movie, but I have to be <laughs> but, black. <laughs> this movie, but I want to have small hands. <laughs> they actually had to size his hands down. They had to cut they his had to sand them down. Yeah. <laughs> they had to sand them down. They had to clip his hands. All right. Hey, All right. So that doesn't here. tell us anything about spoons, Eugene. What? 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 What's your? Sorry, Gabe. What's your bit? Uh, hey guys, Gabe here, the official voice actor for Eugene T. Monkey, level seventeen mountain dwarf fighter. That's also a level three hexblade and old capuchin monkey. Um, if he had a hundred million dollars, I guess first he'd probably purchase. get the first purchase. No, I think he would have buy like a movie studio and he would want to make a movie that's kind of like, like the Irishman with Robert De Niro, but he wants to do the same thing Robert De Niro did where he gets CGI'd younger. So you see 20 <laughs> oh, nice. year old Eugene, like nice. stumbling on a war zone. 
and just stiffly but, shooting someone. But Eugene you... still looks kind of like forty, you know, so it's <laughs> not necessarily yeah. like twenty year olds. <laughs> or like, uh, or like Indiana Jones and the Cogs of Time, where uh, they uh, they they make him young at the beginning, and then for the rest of the movie, he's old again, but also not as old as he is in the real world. <laughs> What if he was like yeah. Mansa Musa instead, the first rich man? And he traveled around. He gave I don't think Mansa Musa movie. was the first rich man. He, I he was the first like rich man. The I richest just, I just, man. I, no, I just asked everyone about it. He was the first rich uh, man. Okay. I'll look up, I'll look up the first rich, rich man. man. Nick, what's up? I think the first rich man is, is in the Bible. <laughs> He's that yeah, guy who couldn't um, fit through the eye of a needle but could eat a camel or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's one. A camel is um, more yeah, delicious I mean, than fitting through the eye <laughs> than the eye of the needle. <laughs> All right. If if Ani had the hundred billion dollars or whatever, he'd uh, get plastic surgery to look exactly like the peanut butter gamer. <laughs> oh, dude! I for- I haven't thought about PBG in a while. Didn't he? Do- didn't he do something like awful not long ago? I think I think he was one of the ones who didn't. But I haven't really, really? been keeping yeah, up. Like, no, yeah, I, I changed like my that. answer. Eugene would get surgery to look like Gerard the Completionist. <laughs> <laughs> and spoons oh, would get man. surgery to look no, like John Tron. I was gonna I was gonna go a little more indie. I was gonna say spoons would get surgery to look like Rage Gaming videos from Minecraft Quick Build Challenge. <laughs> Get, get a big red question mark on his face. <laughs> <laughs> I can that get just a thumbnail like be? Ant can Venom? a thumbnail just be these four guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey guys. Yeah, it's Harrison's me. getting surgery to look Harrison. like Sky does Minecraft. If I had a hundred million dollars, <laughs> I would probably get plastic surgery to look like the pissed off video gamer. Uh, <laughs> uh. We should we should do a, the the Delta Green campaign should be set at the normal boots office. <laughs> the yeah. normal normal boots. <laughs> can we can this episode start with the normal boots logo? No, real real answer. I would make a movie uh, called Mudman, and it's about a mudman. Oh God! That's probably oh. what I'd do with a hundred million dollars. Oh um, yeah. I wonder if Simon Cowell would give me. Fifty grand to, to do mud man. man. You should. That's t- like, you should. That's nothing like shark. I only know about normal boots. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't really watch tell movies. Tell that to me in normal I boots. I just know about normal boots. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell me that? In, yeah. Can you explain that to me in normal boots? Mm, Star Wars. <laughs> did normal boots do an episode on that? Sorry, normal uh, boots is not a YouTube. Uh, did you know? Isn't anything. did you know gaming part of normal boots? Because there's did you know movies? Maybe we can oh, like, somehow. Did, did get you know that gaming was? I mean, like like. I feel like all of these dudes hosted Did You Know Gaming at one point, so probably. Yeah. Who are these people? There's so I don't know. many of them. <laughs> I know. I, I really only know the middle two. Was, was this Ed Wood guy, was he in any Brutal Moose videos? Because if not, I've got no idea. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Brutal Moose. Oh, look at Pro Jared. <laughs> He's a little worm. Alright. <laughs> he does look exactly like one of the worms from Worms. Like, from Who's Disco Worms. Like the worms from Disco Worms. Oh, for Disco Well, it's actually called Disco Vermer. It's a German movie. Oh, Disco um, Vermer. <laughs> oh, I watched an Australian movie called Boar, which I think is just a worse version of Razorback, which All right, I haven't moving seen, on. but it was good. <laughs> you had a bore of a time. No one wants to hear about your movies, dude. I had a great that time. That you made up. Okay. Not even normal, but it's really good. Should we go episode now? Time? Yes. Back to us, but save the world first. You've been swell, but it's time to say farewell. <laughs> Barovia, a little over a month ago, in a blood-stained room inside his palace, Malg arranges a pile of bones into a particular pattern. When the pattern is complete, the right corner of this room darkens until it is completely void of light. Malg, the tall, pale elf, smiles and faces the dark corner from which a deep, cold voice booms. I have a message for you, Malg. Yes, my dark god? You've been serving me well. 
Freedom will soon be yours. There is a chimpanzee landing in Faerun soon. He will be lost and confused. I need you to find him, guide him, successfully persuade him, and soon the god books will be yours. And then mine. And Malik says, Oh yes, of course, master. Consider it done. And then Dooney wakes up. He looks up at the gray sky of the Shadowfell, then turns over to face Paul Benus, sleeping near their campfire. Dooney says to himself, Boy, what a weird dream! And, uh, and now we're in the present day. Ani. Ani the baboon. Well, actually, Ani the bird. You are a bird flying up through the air of the elemental plane of air. Uh, trying to escape the oncoming urban sprawl. Um, and you keep flying up, 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 until eventually you reach this place where the air kind of fizzles out and turns into the black void of the planescape. This is void with a lowercase v. Void with an uppercase v is a different thing, separate from the planescape. Let's be clear here. Uh, but yes, you are flying up into the, the inky blackness of the planescape, and as you do... Uh, you realize you can't fly anymore because there's no gravity here and there's no air. You're still breathing somehow, but there's no force for you to flap your wings against. And you're kind of just floating there until you see uh, flying through the blackness of space approaching you is a 1970 Dodge Charger. And sitting in the front seats are Paul Benus and Gus the Dog. And who, who? Sorry. <laughs> you, you, whatever plosive you just made went. went Paul, Paul Venus and Gus the dog. Oh, okay. I thought you said Gug. <laughs> yeah, it was Gug. Yeah, it was in the Paul audio Venus really and went, Gug. Gug. <laughs> I was like, it was Gug. <laughs> oh, shit, you got a game plan. It's a game plan you picked up along yeah. the way. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going Doctor Who. We're going to do new companions every episode, and this one's Gug. <laughs> Uh, nah, but yeah, what do you, uh, Paul Venus, you are driving with, uh, Gug alongside you, <laughs> um, looking, uh, driving, uh, towards the edge of the map you've been given to the Celestial Plains, uh, yeah. the tiny dying man's Gusagram told you to meet him there. And, what? Uh, <laughs> what the yeah. fuck is going on? <laughs> It's like a hologram, but it's made out of Gus. Right. Yeah. Um, and anyway, you see, you see a, a bird that kind of, uh, it kind of looks like Ani a little bit, uh, flapping uh, uselessly in space. Wow! Look at that bird that kind of looks like Ani, <laughs> ball uselessly, uselessly flapping in space. It's got. I wonder how many points I can get from hitting him. <laughs> oh. Oh, help me. Oh, that really is Ani, because he's saying Paul help me in his, his iconic Ani voice. Um, I sort of, like, I do this amazing trick, right? Where yeah. I kind of, like, I roll down the windows, and then I do sort of, like, a donut spin, and I, like, catch Ani in the car, in the back seat, because uh, <laughs> Ani flies through the windows when I, like, donut right around him. Uh, give me and maybe an I... acrobatics check for that. Yeah, you got it, boss. Um, Should it be a vehicle check? <laughs> is there vehicle. a vehicle check? Is that a I thing in this game? I, yeah, something. But... Uh, let's I see. think you can vehicle proficiency, but it's a different thing than a... You can add custom skills in this game? Yeah. That's cool. Alright, I'll just do acrobatics. Thank uh, you. That is, I, I, I is literally a nat 20. Yeah, exactly what you one. described happens. Yeah, you this bird goes right through your window, and and, and I'm playing "Jump" by Van Halen on the radio too. Also. <laughs> nice. It's aw it's like so. Awesome. Crisscross will make you jump, <laughs> jump. Bird on it. You're inside this. Uh, you're inside this 1970 jo Dodge Charger. Hey, Ani, I'd like you wow. to meet Grug. He likes, <laughs> he likes gnawing on bones and uh and elephant ribs. Gus the dog <laughs> turns around and says, "Orf, orf." <laughs> <laughs> elephant uh, ribs. <laughs> What's going on? What's going Not on? mammoth yeah. ribs, modern elephants. Yeah. Sorry, what'd you say, Nick? He loves eating chicken wing. Chicken wing, yeah. 
Paul, what's, go- Paul, what's going on? Well, I was, uh, well, uh, you know, I took my time to go do some thinking, and then I got this, uh, interdimensional, uh, car, uh, I basically won a race, uh, don't, <laughs> don't, if anyone says otherwise, they're, they're lying, all right, I won the race, and I won this car from it, and now we can travel across planes, and I got a message, uh, from dear old Gus, and, uh, you know, the, you know, the gus of uh, Tiny Dime Man said some shit. And gave me these coordinates, and uh, I'm going this way. Well, what what brings you this old neck of the woods, huh, on the old pal, buddy of mine? Pats him on the head. Uh, I would... <laughs> a robot's trying to kill me, I think, so. Well, that uh, that's something you don't see every day. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes! <laughs> I, I start writing down Ani's name and the Friends logo on a piece of paper, and I put it in my back pocket. <laughs> Uh, anyways <laughs> let's get going okay we're gonna cut to spoons now because you guys are about to run into him but we have to talk about secret stuff first so would you guys all mind moving to prison really quick oh, oh god really okay and I'll, I'll drag you back when we're done wow yeah well that's brutal right, fine nick go to prison great, just great nick Send go to, to prison the the teacher's office. nick like, go to prison uh, go to prison now <laughs> spoons ringo you are drifting in space alongside a Tarask and Dooney, a.k.a. Thar's Dune, the Mad God. Uh, yeah, sure am. Um, what the fuck can I do here? Do I have a, I, I, I gotta find a, a, a fire extinguisher to gravity my way through space with, but I get the fuck away. Um, hey man, I can just call some demons and they can like pick us up if you want. I like invented I demons. Did you know that? <laughs> wow. Oh man. Yeah. I, yeah. Now I do. Um, okay. Uh, um. Call some demons. That yeah, we I can just call some up and they'll pick us up. That we want to do. We can stop at like uh, McDonald's or Burger Gring. Yeah. Or. Uh, or. Um, Grendy's. Grendy's is good. Or. Uh, or. I got, I'm really trying for this one. Um, I got nothing. I got no, uh, alive guys. Are they serve you some? You mean <laughs> alive guys? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> or, or great, oh, great man. crack. <clears throat> he starts beating himself on the forehead again. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, sorry. I'm still feeling a little crazy from my time in the shadow fell, but it's all coming back, man. It's all coming back. I remember it all so clearly now. Yeah. Uh, are you? Are you think you're gonna find, you know, hu- humility and empathy from the time you spent in exile? I'm thinking about some things. That's not an answer. Uh, but hey, okay. Is that a 1970 Dodge Charger? He points oh. into the distance, and what? you see a 1970 Dodge Charger uh, far away in space. If you squint, you can see it moving the towards 1970 you. 1970 Dodge Charger. Hey, uh, 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 Morticia Adams family, is that a 1970 Dodge Charger? I think it is, Spoons. I think it's a 1970 Dodge Charger. Wow. Where, where would you even find a gas station out here? Wow. Hey, if, can you guys do me a favor? What? Uh, whoever's in this car, don't tell them about me being the mad god, okay? I mean... I'm a, I, I'm a little freaked out. Why? Yeah? Why? Because if you do, I'll kill you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, cool. look, man. Spoons. I'm Morticia. Yeah. We don't know each other, really. I just met you like five minutes ago, so I'm mainly talking yeah, to talk to me. Yeah, talk Spoons, to me. Spoons, you're a cool dude, okay? I consider yeah. you a friend. We went through some tough stuff together. Remember that really cold village you took us to by accident? That was tough, okay? We've been through some rough stuff. Remember that shadow guy chasing us? Oh, man, that sucked. We've been through thick and thin together, Spins. We are bosom buddies. Yeah. And I don't want anything to ruin that friendship, okay? Okay. So don't tell anyone about me being the mad guy, okay? I probably shouldn't have blurted that out the way I did. It's just, you know, memories come racing back and... A little overwhelmed, okay. but uh, yeah. yeah, let's keep it. Let's keep that under wraps, okay? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. 
Let's keep that astral dreadnought in the bag, shall we? Let's... Yeah. All right, buddy. I'm glad you're uh, on the same page. All right. Um, Why don't you take the lead on this one, then? Okay. You do the talking. He starts waving at the car. Um, Let's go back with the others. Okay. Bring him in. I wish there was, like, a contestant on America's Got Talent that was just the alien from... uh... Men in Black, and that was their talents. They just opened up their head, <laughs> and that's and that's just what shocked yeah, the world. You get, you get a group of people up there, and you have to guess which one is what. <laughs> yeah, you, that's my talent. I'm like judges. One of these is a tiny alien from Men in Black, <laughs> and you have to guess which is which. Right, hell, ah, uh, never knew this day would come. That's what fucking Simon. My friend had a prolapsed anus. <laughs> That's the talent. <laughs> Howie, go you're going to like this one. <laughs> yeah, Howie, yeah, <laughs> Howie. This one's going to hit pretty close to home for you. <laughs> hey, guys. We're back. We're back. Paul Venus, uh, you, and, you are driving this uh, 1970 Dodge Charger with Gus in the passenger seat and Ani is sitting behind you. And as you drive, you see on the distance a figure waving. It is a tall, muscular figure with black hair, frosted tips. He's got tattoos all over his body. He has a black sword. Not Max Black Sword's black sword, but a black sword. He has these sort of floral shorts with a flame decal on them. Uh, and this is Dooney. Do you remember Dooney? Dooney? Oh, yes! Okay, so he, let me set up the scene. So I'm talking to... I'm talking to... Uh, Wait, we're not quite done yet. We're not quite done yet. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Next to Dooney are Spoons Rango, who is also floating there. Spoons Rango's, uh, a, you saw him become a lich, right? But he, I don't know if it's, it's sunk in yet. He is a little taller, a little ghastlier looking. And also next to them is like an 80 foot tall Tarrasque, uh, like a giant oh. dinosaur creature. Cool. And they're just floating in space. And Dooney's waving um, at you. So I was, I, like, I was in the middle of a conversation with Ani and I said, and that's why, then that's what would happen if a phrenologist came on to America's Got Talent. What the fuck? Wait, what the hell? What? Dooney and Spoons, he's all lynch like in a T in a T Rex. Is that Paul uh, Venus? Paul Venus! Oh my gosh, what a coincidence. Holy fuck. I've got Dooney, one of your friends minute, here, man. I think. Yeah, I that's breathe. my buddy. I can't you breathe. You pull out up here. next to him, and he says, hey, hey man, what's up? Uh, you think you can fit us in there? I'll well, probably not the Tarrasque, but uh, and uh, yeah, we're probably up. gonna have to leave that Tarrasque to die. No, but, uh, <laughs> you look up at the Tarrasque, and uh, you recognize this Tarrasque as uh, Spoons's friend Morticia Adams' family who attacked you in uh, in Gontelgrim. And oh, she yeah. looks down and says, Hey, nah, don't leave me to die. Come on, can you just not be a Tarrasque? Be something else. No, she no. has a Tarrasque. You can't change into something. No. Um, anybody? Can we shrink her? Yeah. Anybody got any shrinking stuff? Besides, I might. I'm looking. Uh, let me. Let me see. Uh. I got a horse figurine. No. No, that turns into a horse. I got the. Sto- I got the stone of pizza delivery. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, you, I don't remember having dude, that. Dude, use the stone of pizza delivery. <laughs> hey, when guys, the mission's over, guys, I got it. I can shrink her. I got like powers now, Paul. Uh, I'm not hey, uh, Morticia Adams' family. You want me to polymorph you? Uh, yeah, well, get me out of here. Okay. Um, he turns her into a very small Tarrasque. Uh, oh. she shrinks down until she's like, uh, like three feet tall and <clears throat> she's tiny now. And she says, oh, sweet. I can like fit in stuff now. Spoons, look at me. That, yeah, that's good. I'm like even smaller than you. That's crazy. So Cause you're small. so small. Yeah. 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 Well, hey, small fry. I'm glad everyone, everyone can fit in the car now. Yeah. All yeah. right. Um. And even, so, uh, I look at my coordinates and I ask to myself, uh, 
is am, am I here where the tiny dying man, or do I still got to keep driving? You still have to keep driving. Okay. Well, uh, I asked myself if I was here, I got to keep driving, and I guess I got to keep driving. So, you guys, I got a message from the tiny dying man, and he gave us some coordinates. You guys want to come with me? I don't know Maybe. who that is, but know. sure. <laughs> Sounds fun. Hey, Paul, so where'd you... you know who the tiny dying man is? I know who the tiny dying man is. Should we go to him? Question mark. What do you mean, should we go to him? Do you not know who the Tiny Dying Man is? Who is he? No, I know who he is, but what what were your plans? I don't know, I just didn't want to, like, step on anybody's toes here. I'm sorry, speaking know, of, is someone to... clipping their toenails in this car? What's happening? <laughs> yeah, I actually am. <laughs> <laughs> Paul just his feet up on the dashboard. <laughs> yeah, his, his feet are on the wheel while he's clipping them. <laughs> this is actually great character development because now he knows you don't have to rip your toenails out before bed anymore. So for the yeah. first time in his life, they're long enough to clip. I forgot I did that. What was that? Yeah. Well, remember, Beauregard told him up. that you have to rip your toenails out before bed every night, and now he knows he doesn't have to do that. Yeah. It's actually really it. beautiful. It's the first time in his life that they've been long enough to clip. Yeah, I'm becoming my own man. All right. Uh, well, let's, yeah, we're, let's we're just floating. We're we're here. Ani, where have you been? How did you get here? How did you get here? Wait, spoons. You first. Well, I was, uh, I was struck, and then I was in the shadow fell, and then hey. and then I was here. I found Dooney, and now we're very close friends, and we trust each yeah. other a we're lot. Losing buddies. Yeah, like me and you, Paul. Been through yeah. thick and thin and thick. Yeah, I mean, we might be even closer than you guys were because we we spent a lot of time together. Uh, you know, nah, Paul we're, we're and I best... were, long, were together longer than that. Yeah, no, I know, but we're like we're really close now. And uh, then we escaped, and we found Morticia Adams' family, and then we were floating, and we were we were talking. And hey, Paul, then so you do found you remember us. the uh, the urban sprawl? Those that big city that was in the shadow fell. You remember them? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they've, they've uh, escaped now. So where, like, where have you been, Paul? They're where, like where? wreaking havoc on the universe. So maybe that's you... why this tiny dying man, whoever he is, I don't know, wants you in the, oh. in the celestial planes. Maybe he needs to talk to you about that. Because if anyone's yeah. safe, it's going to be the gods. Were you not in a, yeah. in Draconia? Where were you, Paul? Uh, I went I went to go, you know, do some thinking. I uh, hiked up some mountains. I went fishing in a pond. And then I entered myself in a race. Uh, a race which I won. If anyone tells you I didn't win, uh, that's bullshit. Because I won this cool car from it. Um, and if you meet anyone who knows about this race, just know that they're a washed up loser. What kind of race? Um, Car race. Drift race. Uh, it's a fast car race. You know, cars burning rubber. Uh, <laughs> gear shifts. He, he begins to explain this weird parable as they drive off towards the corner. The- uh, the coordinates. So you guys all cram into the uh, into the back seat, and uh, Dooney leans over and offers a hand to Ani, and he says, "Hey, pal, I don't think we met before." Have you? Yeah. Who are you? I'm Dooney. I'm Ball's friend and Spoons's friend. We met in the yeah. Shadowfell. Is there? It's great um, to meet you, buddy. What's your name? Well, yeah, you're you're just everyone's friend except for me. Cool, I'm Ani. Uh, well, we're gonna be friends <laughs> now, Ani. Nice to meet you, Ani. Yeah. He slaps uh, you. Ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, that was really mean, but whatever. So it's yeah. a long drive to the Celestial Plains. You guys can all take a long rest. Oh. So you drive for a long time through the space. And as you go, you pass some of these crystal spheres, which from the distance look like stars, but when you get up close, you can see that there are entire worlds behind them, but many of these worlds are now metal and gray. You can see that they have fallen to the urban sprawl. And as you pass them, you keep driving for hours and hours and hours, until eventually you reach a wall. A wall in space going up, down, left and right as far as you can see this wall is is golden and glittery and there's these white runes etched in it as far as you can see and it's it looks as though you've reached the end of the universe but then a slot opens up in this wall a slot big enough to fit a 1970 dodge charger and standing there 
you see a tall, blue-skinned man with big angel wings wearing a suit of golden armor. Looks a little bit like Pro Jared. And he holds out a hand and says... (laughs) (laughs) So... You must be Bahamut's chosen ones. We've been waiting for you. Oh my god. Uh, what? Yes, we oh, are the Bahamut. Yes. We, we are the Baja Blast 4. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, we're the That's Baja, awesome. man. We're the Baja, man. <laughs> Thank we're you. here to see who let the dogs out. Um, <laughs> we're here to bring a formal we're, investigation we're, about who let the dogs out. This is official business. This is official Baja business. <laughs> Bahama told me the three of you liked to goof. So why don't you come on in? Join us at the Temple of Assembly. Ooh. Sure. Like a school assembly? Yeah. I, Follow any, me! And he flaps what? these big wings and starts flying into the distance. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, so, uh... <laughs> I mean, uh... uh Ani, there's, there's not much to know about Dooney. He's a, he's a real good guy. I, uh, yeah! Save, save my ass, save Paul's ass. If you remember our, our old friend Mr. Hollywood, he's just like him. There, nothing more needs to be said li- about that. I'm just, you know, drawing comparisons to our life so you don't have to wait to get to know Mr. him. Mr. Hollywood, see how great a guy name. Is. I bet yeah. I'm just like him. <laughs> you are, you're, he's a great guy, yeah. He cool. was, um, <laughs> yeah. So, Ani, you get what right, I mean by okay. that. You can see by his handsome, you can see by his face. Um... But yeah, uh, um, how much you know about this place, Dooney? You you know where we're going? Because I don't think we do. Actually, yeah, I, I do kind of know where we're going. It's the Celestial Plains. It's the Temple of Assembly. I've heard stories of it. This is where the gods meet. Oh, nice. As you drive, you drive through this golden hallway until it opens up and you're on the other side of the wall and you are in a paradise of clouds this beautiful blue sky with clouds but these different cloud islands all over uh you see um different towns built into some of these clouds in the distance with all sorts of different architecture uh different styles but you seem to be heading towards one cloud in the distance where a white marble temple stands this big sprawling temple uh the edges are lined with tall columns that give us sort of this doric greek style um and the car is driving up in that or and the the angel is leading the car up in that direction and uh Dooney, Turns to you guys and says, oh, wait, one second. <laughs> and he shrinks down and turns into a little goblin. What? Oh, I thought he was what, pitching what? a loaf or something. Why did, you, what, why did you do that? No reason. Don't, don't do that. I just, wait, wanted, I just felt like being a little goblin. What? I'm extremely okay. suspicious of this unique no, character. That, that's fine. You, uh... Uh, yeah, me too. Honestly, me too. That's, <laughs> dude, me too. Holy shit! I cast alter self Hashtag and I look like a too. goblin too. <laughs> okay, you also turn into a little goblin, dude. That makes so much sense here. <laughs> uh, Morticia Adams' family sticks her head outside the window and says, "Wow, this place is beautiful." Yeah, I mean, no, no story could do it justice, eh, Dooney? It's pretty incredible looking. Why are you talking to me in sp- specifically here? Because you said you heard about it from stories. I was like, stories oh, can't true. do this justice. True. This is beautiful. Oh, true. This is mesmerizing. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this before. Wow. It's so good to have everyone here. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> was, that, uh, was that a little fart there, too? <laughs> that was a burp. Oh, so uh, so, so good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so terrible. <laughs> Paul Venus, do you follow the angel in your Dodge Charger? Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, he, that's an inquisitive fart. <laughs> he touches down at the entrance way to this temple. There are these tall golden doors uh, standing there, and lying outside of them is the tiny dying man, and he's got a hole in his stomach from which he is bleeding. Jesus Christ! How big's the hole? Uh, well, it's, I mean, it's small, because he's small, but it's, like, pretty big. It's pretty not good looking. 
pinky sized? <laughs> nah, maybe like thumb sized. <laughs> All right, I stick my thumb in it. <laughs> oh, so you're getting out of the car to talk to him? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what the hell? Here, let me help you out here, man. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I'm stopping the bleeding. I'm stopping the bleeding. What? A tiny okay. diamond. That's what cool, happened? I guess. Uh, what did happened? You... <laughs> Spoons. Hi. Ani, Paul, where's Spoons? Where is he? Right here. Oh, you're a goblin, and there's also another goblin in a tiny Tarrasque. What is the deal with that? People in a car, you know. Okay, whatever, <laughs> maybe they can help. Did you yeah. tell Paul about what I told you last time we met? Oh. Um, no, I, I didn't tell him yet. I was saving, uh, saving it. To be a surprise. That's okay. Because we've met so many, we met, we met so many new friends along the way. It hasn't really been the, the surprise? right time. What do you Paul, mean surprise? Lean down. Let me see you. Why are you talking so much, Tiny Diamond? This is weird. What's going on, Paul? This is very important. It's a personal thing for you, Paul. I think you should listen in close. Okay. I bit. I put my big, uh, flappy chimp ear up to next to him. He holds his hand on your cheek. And speaks into your ear and he says, Paul, when the tidy dying village told you that I was born under a cursed star, they were somewhat correct. <laughs> I yeah? am not one of them, Paul. I what? am the source of your paladin powers. W what? Stand back, Paul. Okay, what the fuck? He starts to change and grow and change shape. Uh, uh, He's evolving like Pokemon! Holy shit, guys! <laughs> Spoons and Eugene. Sorry, Eugene, you're right here. Spoons and Ani. When you last saw him, he turned into a huge platinum dragon. This time, he turns into a tall old man wearing a wide brimmed wizard's hat with uh, a long white beard and uh, a, a robe made out of shiny platinum scales. And he says, Father Winter! Poor Venus! I am the god Bahamut, god of order and lord of dragonkind. Also the Whoa. god of fishing, as it happens. And you've been living in my ass willingly? Yes, I've been living in your ass, Paul. I chose the form of the tiny dying man to test you and to watch you, my chosen ones. I have been the source of your power this time. Through your love of fishing, you've tapped into my domain. Now oh, the wow. universe needs you more than ever. The he's three a really of nice you guy. and Eugene. Where is Eugene? Where is Eugene? I believe he's inside. I, I believe he is accompanied as Nodeus, the god of hell. Oh, big Whoa, shot, cool. Eugene! You notice there's still there's still a big hole in his stomach, though. Uh, you can't see it through the robe, but you can see blood on this robe. Can I try to heal him? You can try Play to. Hands on pool. Do you go over to do right. that? Yeah, I do. Here, tiny D man. No, Paul. Paul, no, don't heal me. Not yet. Why? What you do you mean, not yet? Because I I have ripped out this. This hole of this flesh on purpose, Paul. I was stabbed by the urban sprawl. They tried to convert me. I, I had to oh. amputate, Paul. Oh. Kind of a freak, okay. No, it's the only way to prevent myself from changing, and it's not permanent. But I hope it will be long enough to... to, to take care of what needs to be done. Now, inside here, the gods are meeting. The, the urban sprawl has been released. They are conquering the universe one plane at a time, moving at a speed much faster than they did last time. It seems like the world is ending and the gods must officially decide to move in. Uh, they want to go to war. Holy which God. is perhaps good. not a good, good idea, but I have yeah, that's my a, own ideas. that's a good idea. Anyway, I, I think you should be here for this, and, and if the gods will permit me, I would like to volunteer you to, to do a special mission. There is a reason I chose you. I believe you are more able to deal with this than any of us, even us gods. But but we'll get to that later, okay? That's are you ready to go inside? 
Feel um, free to bring yeah. your weird goblin and your little Tarask with you. Okay. Of course. Come here, guys. Come on. Um, yeah, I'm going to turn to him and go, uh, what, uh, uh, what should I, what would you like to be called while we're in here? Uh, you can just call me Danny. Yeah? yeah. Call me. Don't okay. call me anything else, though. <laughs> just Danny, that's my name. I'll call you anytime. <laughs> nah. I'm as, long like as, you're, as long as you're cool with Danny, I just wasn't sure because the goblin stuff. Here, we need to have a little free cuddle right now. Um, <laughs> What? Uh, you... Free cuddle. Because it's more than just monkeys here. I'll, I'll include everybody in this huddle. Okay. Free cuddle. Come on. Come on, Jenny. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to this. Okay. Let's... Okay. Free cuddle. We can, we, can, we can fill Eugene in once we get inside. We can but, fill uh, Eugene? We're going to do what, okay. Eugene? With, with what? <laughs> with cement. We're going to fill him up with cement. <laughs> and then these no. tall double, these tall golden doors <laughs> swing open. And you can see um, inside this large temple. There is sort of an amphitheater of sorts. An amphitheater is only outside, right? So I guess it's not an amphitheater. But, you know, like a, uh, like a circular stage surrounded by, like, pews uh, down in the middle of this temple. Above the, the pews, there are all these gods mingling. And angels, too. But you see these, these striking figures. You see a man with skin of bark wearing a robe of leaves. You see two twin goddesses, one with black hair, one with white, one? wearing a long black robe and a long white robe, respectively. Oh, the Baldur's see... Gate ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are the Baldur's <laughs> Gate ones, yeah. Uh, there's, there's, uh, you see a, uh, a, a tall, ugly fish woman. You see an orc god with an eye patch. You see a beautiful, glittery elf uh, with his long golden hair and golden armor. You see a, uh, a bearded man whose skin glows like the sun. All of these striking figures mingling with each other, and you also see, uh, kind of standing in the corner, not talking to anyone in particular, a person with a bespoke red suit, a uh, pencil-thin mustache, Ani, you recognize this as Asmodeus, the god of hell, and standing next to them is Eugene. Eugene, what is Eugene wearing? Eugene is wearing um, 2005 Keanu Reeves Constantine suit. <laughs> <laughs> Constantine. Cool. And uh, a fez. Cool, cool. Oh, and perfect. a fez? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I that turn to, awesome. to Ani and I go, I know it smells crazy in there. <laughs> what? I mean in there? We're in here. We're here. Just yeah. smell. I w- Inside Eugene? <laughs> Inside Eugene. Eugene, yeah. you see this guy it, waddling into the, into the temple. Um, Eugene kind of swirls around his martini a little bit. He eats the olive, takes another swig. <laughs> um, he's uh, coughing. Boss, is it- yeah. <laughs> He, he coughs up the olive hole that starts rolling down the rolling down the main dance floor. Hey, uh, dance boss, floor? Is it, is it all, yeah, there's a dance floor. Right I, is, is it alright if I go ahead and talk to the buddies real quick? Your buddies? Oh, your friends are here. They must be here with Bahamut. Yes, go. Go mingle. I don't mind. Hey. Uh, hell yeah. Uh, Gene, hey, over boys. Here. Hey, dude. Yeah, he starts walking. Uh, waddling yeah, behind guys. Eugene are his grandkids, Carmen and Percival, and you also see tied to his waist is a little, uh, a, a little, uh, how did I describe it before? Like a little lump of flesh, and this lump yeah, of flesh has an it. elven <laughs> face that you recognize as the face of Malg. What? what the fuck? What is that? Oh, yeah, this is Malg. Uh, I started poking at it. Ooh, ooh, yeah, ouch, feel free. Ooh, ouch. Hey, guys. Yep. It's me, Mal. What, is th- what the fuck is that? Eugene takes out some safety that? pins and starts sending over to some. If you guys want to go ahead and take some stabs, it's all good. No, uh, um, thank you. Uh, explain. Oh yeah. So uh, remember when I died? Right, I got like shot in the face like two times. I guess when not really, but when okay. old uh, tiny dying man, when tiny old Bahamut turned into the dragon, and we all got stabbed and stuff, I landed in hell, and. Uh, and the eternal blood battlefield of, of constant bloody devil demon war. It's a blood it's pretty, war. It was yes. pretty cool. Yeah, the, the blood war. And then we then we caught up with my guy right here. He grabs a lump of flesh and starts squeezing yes, it. I've been turned times, into like a stress oh, ball. Oof, oof. I've been turned into a pathetic demon thing. Yeah. yeah so I we've guess. just been hanging out, and I'm here. I'm here with my my boss and uh, chilling. You know. Your boss. Who's your boss? Hey. Oh, uh, there's Asmodeus right there. He points back. They wave at you. Yeah, I, I, 
Yeah, they do like the Queen Elizabeth wave. <laughs> if we're here with, uh, uh, yeah, I guess having pretty much being the strongest guy in the world um, has some drawbacks. What? You're the strongest guy in the world. Drawbacks? I mean, yeah, yeah, that's true. Carmen says, "Pappy is the strongest guy in the world," and uh, and Percival says, "Until we usurp him." What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Yo, your kids have it out for you, dude. Just. Well, Keep an eye, your natural... eyes peeled. I got like three months left, dude. I'm fine. Are you wh- what the fuck? Are you dying, <laughs> dude? I'm like, I'm like, dude. I'm 19. I've, I've been thing, around for a hot minute. Drink yet? I'm dead. You're dead. Yeah, dude. I mean, hey guys, yeah. Tra- how's it been? How's it been? I haven't guys seen you guys in like, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it was. Yeah, five a measurement of time. I have years. no idea. <laughs> yeah, a few days. You guys days. are looking good. I, I, well, um. I, I went. To, I won a race, and uh, don't tell anyone otherwise. Um, and I got an interdimensional car, and I picked up these these hooligans on the side of the road, the the intergalactic road. And I had a yeah, very easy cool. time. So you're looking, you're looking green and tiny. Me? This other little green tiny goblin, not spoons, walks up to you, Eugene, and says, uh, "Eugene, nice to meet you. I'm Dooney, and uh, Mal, hey. little flesh thing. I don't believe we've met." Eugene, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, this is yeah, Dooney. He's like our friend. He saved me. He saved He's, yeah, he saved, yeah. Yeah. We, we saved each other. We're, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're a pack of saviors over here, you know? It's nice to meet you, Dooney. <laughs> I'm glad you guys had somebody that had your backs. That's pretty good. Yup. Oh, why are you carrying around Maug? So, what, what brings you guys to the, in, to the God Party? Um, um, how about... Okay. Uh, yeah. This is what I wanted to tell the rest of you guys too. So let's have a proper monkey huddle right now. Okay. And all the whole king kaboo, everybody get in. Does that include um, Malg and Eugene's grandkids and Dooney and uh and like, the <laughs> Adams family? Traditional yeah, monkey sure. huddle. <laughs> yeah. Eugene that's takes fun. Eugene takes Malg off his belt and tosses yeah. it backhanded to the oof, kids. Oof, oof. Okay. They yeah, start they start Dooney tossing kids. around like a ball. They yeah, you play with that kid. Oh, Dooney, do you mind giving us some some privacy just for a second? Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, sure. He backs up one step. He's clearly with an earshot. That's fine. He can listen if he wants to. Um, okay, guys, we're gonna be sent on this insane mission. Um, I think our one request should be that we should be elevated to godhood to <laughs> complete it. <laughs> I think we should be. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. If we save the universe against, you know, because they want us to fight the urban sprawl. That's what I'm assuming. You know, uh, the tiny dying man, he's Father Christmas now. Um, sorry? Yeah, he's like an old man. He's oh. like an old man with a big beard. He looks like Father Christmas. Yeah, I yeah. forgot what he is. Yeah. I guess he's my, I guess he's the god that I've been praying to this whole time. Uh, which I, and I've been praying to the god of fishing and Father Christmas, obviously. Um, yeah. So I guess he's Father Christmas. Um, but yeah, if we beat this mission, I think it is fair for us to be gods, right? We should get that in writing first, so they don't yeah. screw us. We should get a contract exactly. and all that. I, Guys, um, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I don't, I don't even know if I'm allowed to go on the mission. This is making me feel wait. young again. This plotting, my God, I, I, wait, I feel wait, like I why can't you go on the mission? I was a different person, and now we're just, we're it's like it's we're up to our old tricks. Why? What? Yeah, why can't you, why can't you come? It's like I don't. I got a boss. I got. I got. A, I got things I got to report to. I got paperwork. I got. You got a boss. I, I got the office. You should be on retirement, buddy. What What are you doing right now? You should be in the Florida Keys, sipping what Mikosos. You got a boss. You got a boss. I mean, uh, Eugene kind of turns back. It's like if you you guys came by the car, I came by request. I gotta be here. You you know. You gotta be here. Mm. We were also requested to be here. We were like, we're summoned. Of- yeah, but you guys oh got like God. a nice. Re- you guys got like a nice. Who just request. fell down he the stairs? I, I turn around. I see <laughs> the kids drop Malg. I, I see the guy with the big beard. Yeah, the kids <laughs> kicked Malg down the risers. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, but like, uh, you fine. guys got like a nice request. I, I didn't did not get a nice request. What do you mean a nice request? Did you like what, take what, your what? soul? Or yeah, they, they they took my kind of immortal soul. They only took right? my hair. That's pretty. I don't know, dude. We'll, we'll figure it out, guys. We're just let's let's just mingle a little bit before the the meeting starts, huh? All right. I think fine. it's a good idea, Paul. I think your idea is yeah, good. Yeah, that's a good. You guys should you guys right? should write write down a con, write down a contract real quick. We'll hammer that. Does anyone have paper? 
I um I don't, okay yeah I'll tell you Eugene what. takes out a Eugene I'm takes sure out they a have paper square. And a pen. I'm sure they have paper and a pen. Mark my guess. Um okay. I know they got like they got cocktail weenies. They might have some napkins. Yeah. There's a, a a tall angel walking around with a dish with hors d'oeuvres on it and also napkins. Damn, I feel like a Silicon Valley tech bro. Yeah, right, okay. a contracts on a little bar napkin, you know. Yeah, okay, get one of those. Thanks, you know, just just act like you've been here before. Yeah. Excuse me, can I? Thank you. Um. Okay. Here uh, you go. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, um, can, I, can I actually can I actually get that instead? <laughs> and then he kind of he puts something down. And he grabs another thing. They all kind of look like Pro Jared, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what are we trying to say here? That all gods look like Pro Jared? No, the angels look like Pro Jared because he's such an angel. Eugene's, Eugene's kind of uncomfortable that his kids are here. Oh now. yeah, keep him away from those children. Oh man, <laughs> Jesus! All right, we're at the contract. All right, all right. Let's get this. Let Let's get this party going. And when the time arrives, contract one contract. word at a time. Yeah, what, yeah exactly. <laughs> Great no, idea. No, not again. Not all again. right, we've d- we've done the contract. It's done. The contract's done. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> cool. Um, and around that time, you notice all these gods are lining up in the. I've been saying rises. I don't think that's what they are. What are the like in a lowered stage? You like, like, like Greek pot- style. What are the like, I know Parthenon the pews like, around that? What are those Greek called? style? They're called feta, I think. Chairs, like, feta and, like, like feta cheese, like, like delicious oh. feta. And and the uh, oh, oh, stop. Oh, oh I'm <laughs> prosciutto, oh. brie, oh. bread. Someone give me a charcuterie board. Oh my god. Oh, oh. Paul's rolling around, r- rubbing his back. I'm just gonna keep calling Great. them risers. I don't think that's the right word, but yeah, that's fine. Who, who's the risers in this plane of reality? They're bleachers. Yeah, you know, the bleachers. yeah they're literally just like. <laughs> no, we're actually, it looks bleachers. like a high school gymnasium. We're not like a high school. Like, <laughs> no, we we're in the, we're in the gym. The... We're, we're in the arena where the Chicago Bulls play. We did that bit with the Council of Eight already. We're not doing that again. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's true. We did. Can uh, it, does this look like the the? Does this look like the Colosseum where the Council of Kings hang out? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Jeez. All the what gods are hooting and hollering. Like I think the of yeah. Kings. <laughs> that paints a really good picture in my head. They all look and the they're same. all they're Pharaoh, all they're all yelling Pharaoh, at each other and pat man. each other like that. I go I go and speak to the, the high tech tiny God. dying man. <laughs> <laughs> The French all tiny Jonathan dying majors. man. Oh, man, that's even worse than no. Pro Jared. <laughs> it's the Council of Jareds. <laughs> but yeah, you see the gods earlier. You see this this orc god. You see a, 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 a like a hobgoblinoid god wearing this black armor. You see a god who is is wearing a, nothing but a loincloth, and his skin is pierced with arrows. Uh, you see a big, tall dwarf, like a dwarf, but scaled up really big, holding a big hammer. Uh, you see a spider goddess. You see a, a winter goddess with a oh, face like an one. owl. They're all patting each other on the back and yelling like the Council of Kings. <laughs> uh, but then a woman standing down on the stage clears her throat. She has raven black hair and a black dress, but her skin... Um, it's like staring into like the cosmos. It's 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 got these different hues of purple and black and bright stars shining. That's what her skin looks like. And she opens her mouth through which you can see this white light. And she oh. says, "I, the goddess Mistra, call this meeting to order." Wow. All right. Okay. Here we are. Let's get this meeting going. We sit down. <laughs> I shush one of the gods next to me. <laughs> um, it would be a funny god to do that. Uh, you shush Kelimvor, the god of death, and he looks <laughs> over at you and she's says, talking. "She's talking." I wasn't talking. She's talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Shut up. Thank you. <laughs> and Mistra says, um, "The urban sprawl are old, old." Oh wow! Our oh, old man. friend. I'm a little, I'm a little nervous here. The urban sprawl, our old foe, has returned. It has the god books. It is conquering this the universe at unprecedented speeds. Last time it moved from plane to plane individually. This time, it is conquering them in masses, and something must be done. Which is why I say we officially. 
take uh, take direct action in mortal affairs, something which is normally forbidden ever since that one war where we kind of messed things up a lot. But something must be done. We must take action. We must go to war. And all the gods start cheering and uh, clapping. Uh, raise a hand if you would like to go to war with the urban sprawl. And Do we vote? almost every god raises their hand. Yeah, let, let's just let's let's, let's, let's just get into it. Yeah. Yes, doesn't matter. Just raise your hand. Uh, Bahamut speaks out and says, Mistra, I have my own proposition. Uh, not entirely, uh, contrary to your suggestion for war. Uh, however, we went to war with the Sprawl once already. We imprisoned them in the Shadowfell. That is no longer an option. Uh, the Shadowfell is, is open now. If we could not kill them then, what makes you think we can kill them now? Mistra says, that is a good point, Bahamut. We have no angle now that we didn't then. And Bahamut says, which is why I've picked four chosen ones. And he gestures to the monkeys. I think before we do our war, we should send them in. I have picked them because they have something that we don't. We do? Oh yeah, we do. She says, M monkeys, four monkeys. You have to be joking, Bahamut. That... That is a ridiculous idea. And um, Asmodeus from the crowd says, I quite agree. Uh, the, Bahamut, you are old, and I think you've grown a little bit weak in the brain. This idea is stupid and dumb. Don't you use one of them as your personal guard? I think that this war is a great idea, but we need to talk about where the god books go after the war is over, after the sprawl is defeated, and Bahamut says, Don't you think you're getting ahead of yourself? And they say, Oh no, not at all. I was just thinking that, you know, we're going to defeat the sprawl anyway, because we're gods, we're all powerful. Um, we should think about where the god books go afterwards, because last time there was like a big war over that, and we don't want that to happen again, do we? Um, and Meester says, Hmm, I suppose you're right. And uh, Kelimvor says, I think I should get the god books. I'm the god of death. <laughs> uh, if anyone can be trusted with them, it is, it is I who, has, uh, who is the steward of the psychopomp who guides souls from one world to the other. I am neutral in this. I have no domain which I must defend. Uh, afterwards, Groomsh says, uh, Groomsh, the, the orc god, says, No, I want the god books. Uh, Char says, I think I should have the god books. And Selene says, Nah, I think I should have the god books. And, uh, one of the gods, you're not sure who, uh, throws a piece of paper, a wadded up piece of paper at, uh, another god who you don't see. That god throws a piece of paper back. Uh, Kelimvor grabs the, th the throat of Siric, the god on the other side of him from you, spoons, and there is now a full-scale tussle. All these gods are, like, punching each other and throwing stuff at each other. Whoa, 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 I think we gotta start moving down to the middle. We gotta get these guys' attentions all at once. Well, what if I yeah, let's, know, let's what if go. I, what if I cast Meteor Storm right now on us? That's wait, 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 I got this. I got this, guys. <laughs> Here, I, let's go down to the middle of, the, of this Council of Pro Jared's Coliseum. Come on, everybody. Uh, and I go to the center, and I just start going. <laughs> Does this get their attention? Give me a performance check. Okay. Uh, 18. Yeah, you go down there and you stand next to Mistra, who is looking around, confused. And you do that noise, and, and gradually all the gods hush down and they all look down at you. Alright. Let's make something clear. Clearly y'all don't believe that us four monkeys can do it, right? No. Okay. Good. We're all on the same page here. So why don't you let us at least try? Because we don't want to wait. You don't want to waste your godly lives on a, uh, on a, a fight just like this, you know? So why don't you send us in first? If we can't do it, then why don't you all, you know, come up with uh, your real plan? All right. Just give us a chance. Give me a... Um... What are the checks in this game? I don't remember. I've been playing Built Degree. Persuasion? For so long. No, no, not that one. 
Religion? Nope. Hold on a second. History? Yeah, give me a history. No. Give me a perception. Uh, 14. Um, you notice over the shoulder of Magubliet, the goblin god wearing his black armor, uh, a little crack in space opens up, and he hasn't noticed it yet. But there's this little gap in reality through which you can see, like, fog and blackness and gray. Whoa. Hey, everybody, uh, what's that? Crack in space! I, po- I, I point to it. Magubliet turns around, and a metal spike shoots out of this crack and strikes oh, him to the chest. Shit. And it goes, oh, oh, fuck. Oh, oh, oh. And this liquid metal Sorry, comes goblins. off of the spike and starts wrapping itself around his chest, his limbs, his neck, and all the gods start panicking. And Do Dooney me. starts Do laughing. Me. Is there anything here? <laughs> Oh Why are you laughing? I, what the no, fuck? I'm sorry, it's so obvious. It's so obvious. I was so stupid. They were so stupid. Do you want to do anything? The gods yet? were so sure of themselves. They locked the urban sprawl in the Shadowfell, thinking that their seal would never break. But now the seal has broken. And the Shadowfell, it connects to every plane in existence. Even the celestial ones. Wait, so why are you laughing? This sucks, man. What the fuck? It's it's, because it's just it's so obvious. I should have realized. They should have realized. Uh, But yeah, we best should probably run. Can't you fucking do something about this? Can I do? Why can I? Why would I be able to do something about this? Because I'm talking to you quietly. Fucking asshole. Uh, I can run away. Oh, you are such a motherfucker. Okay. Um, while you've been having this conversation, uh, Sirik, the god of lies, has fallen. He is being covered in this metal. Moradin, the god of the dwarves. Corellan, the god of the elves. Oh, Selene and Shar, the gods of... I forget what they are. The gods of sun and, sun and moon, I think, right? Sun and moon, yeah. I think No, Selene is like moonlight, and Shar oh. is like just darkness, I think. Oh, anyway. stupid. Anyway. They're god of gaming. <laughs> anyway, they're getting taken down. Yeah, everybody um, hustle up, huddle up. Hello, everyone. Come on, our whole our whole group. Everybody, quick, single file line. Let's let's leave. Yeah, Morticia, Adam's family, and Dooney are there. The kids run over with uh, Malg. I'm gonna pretend that there's less than eight of us. I'm not gonna count. I assume there are. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I'm gonna count. How many of us are there? You, uh, Eugene. Can Eugene count? Spoon. All right, that's one. Eugene's grandkids, Malg, Dooney. Ani, Morticia Adams family. That's, That's exactly eight. eight. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, I, t- I take down my pants. I start peeing a big circle around us all. <laughs> so you're gonna teleport everyone out of there? Yeah, so I'm, I'm peeing As you a do big that, teleportation circle. You notice um, more of these gods are falling. Mistra, the god of magic, is struck by this liquid metal, and crawling out of this portal now, which has enlarged, you see these figures and with these like metal exosuits that have become part of their skin, just pale, dead flesh underneath. You see uh, beholders and and uh, neogi and all sorts of strange otherworldly races, as well as humanoid races. You even maybe see some figures you recognize. You uh, per- see perhaps a, a, a golden old dragonborn. You see perhaps a little man in a flannel shirt that is covered in metal. They are crawling out of this portal. Uh, you see Asmodeus fighting a few of them, uh, shooting bolts of fire. But more gods have fallen. Groomsh, the orc god. Lolf, the goddess of spiders. And these gods are putting up a fight. You know, they're using all their power. You see meteors raining down. You see uh, flashes of light and fire and ice. In one of the, the corners of this temple, you see what looks like a blizzard raging around. But they've just been caught so off guard. Uh, and they are gradually falling one by one. And when one god falls, this uh, metal coats it, goes into its mouth, into its eyes. And then that god, too, becomes part of the sprawl. And with each god fallen, the sprawl becomes more powerful and assimilates more gods. What the hell? What do they even do? Like, guys, what do gods do if this is just them? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. Like, do all, like, the things that... Like, do all, like, since the orc god is dying, do all the orcs die? Do the orcs die? Yeah, when yeah. the god of milk dies, do we, is there no more milk anymore? As you watch this, spoons, you pee a circle, preparing to teleport. Checking off water today. Sorry, it's taking a while. Ah! Ah! 
and oh, Bahamut runs out of this fray to the center of the stage where you are, and he collapses onto the ground. And you see this hole in his stomach. Again, you can't see the hole itself. You can see the blood, though. And from this, this bloody spot, metal is starting to come out and coat his robe. You, you, yeah, yeah. Eugene! Uh, uh, spoons! <laughs> Paul! Ani! What? The gods have fallen. It's all up to you now. What was your plan? You can see now with their, their egos. They could not have done this. It has to be you. Well, it has to be us. I first realized something like this. Maybe not this specifically, but something was coming when Neverwinter traveled to your world and took the Book of Life. It is forbidden for gods to act directly in the affairs of mortals, but I had to do something. Then I saw you, and I knew you four were our greatest hope. Why? So I pulled the strings of fate to take you where you were needed. I accompanied you as a tiny dying man to watch you or to test you, to make sure my hope was well founded. And I believe it was. You have changed since coming to Faerun. Some of these changes have been positive, some have been monstrous. But at your heart, you are the same four monkeys I chose when you were scared in over your heads and you're determined to explore a brand new world and find your stolen friends. See, this is the reason I chose you. A hero is someone who is respected, who earns favor with feats of strength. Tharis Dune was a hero once. In the evil Prince Roland's mind, I'm sure he was a hero as well. But you... You are not clever. You are seldom brave. You are often very selfish, egotistical. You are not heroes. You are goofballs, stooges. Stooge. You are friends. And that is what the universe needs right now. Heroics will not defeat the urban sprawl. They are beyond strength. Even we gods could not destroy them the first time. We merely locked them away and that is no longer an option. This metal has surrounded him, and it is up to his neck now, as he says, Remember this. You four have grown so powerful, but that power will not save the world. Remember who you are. Remember your journey. Remember the fun. Remember the friends you made. You may not understand yet, but remember that. Remember your friends. Remember, it is not strength. It is... Uh, you can do this. What? You're going to be wonderful. Okay? And this metal is over his face now, and it goes into his mouth, and he falls to the ground and starts to change. Oh, God. Holy fuck. Let's get in the circle. Guys, we are. Dying man. Everyone in the Let's circle. Go. Let's where, go. Where, man. where are we going? Where are we going? I, 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 um, uh... I, uh, I fucking hear where, where's not, and is there anywhere Let's go to not? the jungle. This is the, ju the jungle. I, just, it's fucking, I, I, I just, la, la da di da. What the hell's happening here, man? Get yourself together. Pick out a place. We'd go anywhere, man. I'm trying to. Marticia Adams from me says, Spoons, come on. You can do this. Take us just out of here. Pick. Okay. Uh, take us home. Okay, this, like, uh, semi-translucent sp fear, sphere of energy appears over the P and starts to tremble as you are being teleported out of here. And as this happens, Asmodeus, who is still fighting some of these metal creatures, looks over at you, sees you leaving, and says, Eugene, make sure no matter what, I get those god books. Activate hell armor. <sighs> And Eugene, your hell armor activates. And then blink, you're gone. Oh no. Whoa. And whew, you reappear. You are no longer standing in the Temple of Assembly. The four of you, along with a tiny Tarasque, a little goblin man, Eugene's grandkids, and a lump of flesh that is Malg, are standing in the burnt remains of your jungle. You look up at an earth sky with earth clouds. Eugene, what do you look like right now? 
For a moment, Eugene kind of just backs away from the circle. He looks up, and then he looks back down to his friends. Guys, sorry about this. He grabs Mao, the lump of flesh, and then brings it to his face. And the flesh now begins to stretch over his mouth, giving him like a venom <laughs> mouth. But it's Mao's <laughs> mouth instead. Fake? What the hell? His eyes, be- his eyes begin to glow as faint red. And instead Mouth of like goes, the oh, traditional oh, fire oh. coming out of his mouth, um, it begins to come out of just every single part of his skin as instead of a red fire, a white fire encompasses him. Oh, oh. And then he summons the axe. <laughs> uh, yeah, as soon as we land, Spoon stumbles out like, and it goes over to a tree and starts puking. <laughs> oh, oh, God. What? What the fuck's going on with Eugene? What? Dude, what are you doing, man? Eugene's gonna go for spoons. Oh, God. Gonna, uh, give me an, uh, uh, an attack. Um, he gets out the axe, and he's, I assume that I don't have much, I don't have a ton of control, right? No. So at this point, you have... In the past, your motives under the hell armor are kill everything you see. That's it. Right now, you have three motives. Kill everything you see, kill the urban sprawl, and get the god books. All right. And you still have all the... Um, do you have the, the thing I sent you where it gives you all your benefits? Yeah, I have the benefits. Sweet. Fire damage, oh, extra okay. speed, extra strength, and then every single time I hit someone, it's a critical. <laughs> yep. What the fuck? Is there any way I could go for spoons, but since he's ducking, can I purposely do it at disadvantage? So it's like I aim for his head, but then he ducks to throw up? No. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just going <laughs> to go for spoons then. Does an 18 hit? <laughs> uh, I'm going to use Illusory Self. So I'm just going to do that that old classic where one of yeah. me appears. And yeah, the real one goes down to throw up. <laughs> Eugene swings the axe, and then the delusion happens, so it goes through the illusion, and then Eugene cracks through the entirety of the tree, like that scene in Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Yeah, and it's it's kind of a burnt, oh, yeah. withered tree, and you just smash it into pieces. Uh, uh, are, are we in combat right now, proper? Yeah, I guess we are. After, after this turn, yes, I will roll. We can roll dexterity. Okay. Alright, come on. Come on, Spoons. Come on. He's gonna go for one more attack on Spoons. Yep. You get like a full turn with this, so. Okay. Does a 23 hit? Um, I have anything else for this? Oh, I've used reaction already, so yes. Yeah, it does. That's uh, 30 damage. <laughs> okay. So, he goes through the tree. He turns, he almost like uses his momentum to kind of just spin himself entirely without moving. Like, the bark from the tree is now getting encompassed in his white flames, slowly making him grow even bigger. And then he's just going to go dash at Spoons one more time. The kind of cloak of the bat turning into these fiery wings that push him forward. Nice. And then he awesome. slashes him. And then he's going to go for that one last attack. Cool. This is an 18. Does an 18 hit? Yep. That's 16 damage as he goes head and he <clears throat> hits him with the flat part of the axe instead of the, instead of the sharp edge. <laughs> yeah, Spoons spits out like three teeth. <sighs> Sorry, buddy. But... Like I said, under new management. Um, we're gonna roll initiative. Okay, can Let's I can roll. I ask one question before we start? Uh, is is this like a spell that Eugene's put in, upon himself? This is like a spell that what? Asmodeus has put on Eugene. This is something. That, okay, well, not not really not a spell. spell. No, it's not a spell. It is it is an yeah. armor that he has. You've seen this once before, uh, twice before. And both times, the only way to prevent it was to, like, talk him out of it. Talk him down. Paul, you're up. Guys, I think I'm going to cast a spell. Believe no way. What? Paul never cast spells. Wow. Yeah. What, uh, what do you have? I have no idea what you'd even pick. What would you pick? <laughs> I got a shitload of spells, guys, that I have never used ever. <laughs> oh my god, I have so many spells. Oh, wow. Um, would, doing, would using Dispel Magic do anything? To Eugene? No. No? Okay. Then I'm just gonna hit him with a flame strike then. Maybe if I burn him a little bit. You could try to talk to him. <laughs> it's also not. Um, so you can use your action to attack him, or you can use your action to make a wisdom save to try to talk him down. Okay. Sorry, not a wisdom save, a wisdom yeah. check. Okay, first I'm gonna cast Holy Nimbus. Which, uh... Okay. 
you know, shines a bright light in 30 foot radius uh, for a minute, and if the enemy is in there, then they take uh, 10 radiant damage uh, every turn. Okay. Uh, oh, so I'm going to nice. cast that. Uh, it's pretty bright in here. Uh, Eugene! Eugene, I'm sorry I do this. It. What's going on, man? It's us, your friends. Uh, are are his grandkids here? Uh, yes. Okay, I pick up the grandkids. Hold the hilda in front of him. Yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. your grandkids are here, man. You're embarrassing yourself. Percival says, pa- "Pappy, you're you're scaring us, Pappy." And Carmen says, "Pappy, what you told us about strength. Remember, this isn't strength, Pappy. You're what's wrong?" <laughs> Kids, it's, it's, it's just business. Be a wisdom check, uh, Paul. Ten. Okay. Okay, but you roll wisdom. We're gonna do it opposed. I rolled a two. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay, it's over already. Um. That's just one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're welcome, guys. Wisdom. Eugene, well, uh, do some shit. You, you, you're, you're, uh, you, you feel this rage, this hatred, all the hatred of hell, as as you want desperately to destroy these these things around you, uh, to destroy the urban sprawl, to take the god books, uh, but then you hear cutting through these flames and this fury, the voice of Paul Benus, your friend. <laughs> It's it's a rather angelic voice amidst all this hatred, you know. Like Eugene's like like as like Paul casts this holy light, Eugene starts running through it for a little bit, and then he brings up his grandkids, and he see, then he sees Paul, and for a moment, he realizes he has three ga- grandkids right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. And the flames subside, and Malg falls Bobby. to the ground. Ouch! Oof! Why'd you do that? Ah <laughs> oh, man! Ah oh, man! Ah oh, man! I'm so guys. Uh, it was cool oh, for a minute, right? Gee. It was pretty cool, huh? That was really cool, but you know, you scared us for a second there. <laughs> Dooney uh, goes back to yeah. his Dooney form and says, "Ah, sorry about that, guys. I didn't want any of the gods to recognize me. Whoa! What the heck's going on with Eugene? Uh, does a twenty-one hit your armor class?" Yeah. So a 22 and a 24, definitely your armor class. Yeah. So he he reaches into space and makes a fist and uh, swings his arm outward and suddenly he is holding a massive burning chain whip and he whips it at you. That's going to be 31 damage. He hits again for... 22 damage. 22. And then he starts gurgling. Swishes something around in his mouth. And spits at you. This awful toxic (laughs) spit. For. 50 damage. Oh my god. Hey, he's fine. We we did it. Paul did it. Yeah. Chill out. How much health does that put you at, Eugene? 108. You have you have over two hundred HP. That's crazy. Um, I have two hundred and twenty one. <laughs> that's insane. Anyway, that is uh, about half your HP in a single attack, and I think you're feeling pretty bad at the moment. Uh, oh, come on, shit, man. It's fine. Eugene Eugene stop. Summons out the axe. I didn't. Know. He was trying to kill you guys. I just. I feel like I reacted <laughs> fairly. Paul. Motorcycle drives. I sorry. I feel like I reacted fairly here. He was trying to kill you guys. No, we figured it out. You saw him you calm down. About this guy's your buddy, right? This guy isn't my friend. I don't know this guy from anything. Yeah, you fucking doofus. Slow. Dude, guys, he like he's powerful. This guy. Are you all this powerful? That's freaking awesome. Yeah, that's why I'm saying we should be. We should be gods. Well, I'll, technically, all the guards are dead. So, guys, there's no one who says that we can't be gods now that we complete this mission. Just saying. Yeah. So, if Bahamut wants you to get the god books, that's gonna be a problem. I didn't realize you guys were that str- this strong. That's rough. See, I wanted you guys to bring the god books to Malg, and that'd be easy. I knew you were strong, but not this strong. Malg failed. So I'm in a bit of a predicament now. Mal, what? Uh, what's your What's your game wait. here? Wait, Dooney. Mal hold on says, a second. Wait, do, do I know you? Who, who are you? Yeah. What? And he says, Ah, sorry. I told Spoons to keep it a secret, but 
I can talk Spoons. about it now. I wanted to ride around with you guys, see where things go, see if I can play any sort of angles at the uh, the Temple of the Assembly. Obviously, that failed. Uh, they all died. Uh, yeah, Paul, sorry, I never told you, because I kind of forgot myself. Dooney is actually a nickname. It's short for Tharis Dune. I didn't say anything. What the fuck? What is that? Who, I didn't that? say what? anything. Yeah, but you could have. I know you didn't, Spoons. You did good. Uh, we're, we're, we're bosom buddies, but I am probably Wait, gonna have to have you guys killed. Anyway, I'll see you later. And he disappears. Who is Thar's Dune? Wait, you're buddies with Thar's Dune? What am I missing what here? Who's Thar's Dune? He's like the fucking big guy. He's the big kahuna. Like he's like the son of the father of Jesus Christ? <laughs> no, like the opposite. Oh. Like big Satan. He's the mother. Man. I thought that was your boss. Oh, the mother. No, this no, this one's like thinking like less think more like tentacles and eyeballs. Oh. Less angels and demons, more tentacles and eyeballs. Like where'd that he go? Kahuna. Well, where where would he go, Spoons? He's your fucking guy. I Spoons. With Thara's Doom gone, uh, Morticia Adams' family starts to enlarge back into normal Tarask size, and she crushes a bunch of trees, and she says, Oh, oh no, oh, come on, oh, man. <laughs> it, it's fine, this place is a fucking mess anyway, don't worry. Wait, are we on Earth? We're... You said take us Why home. Are you confused? Yeah, we're back in the jungle. The you, you are in the burned jungle uh, that, that used to be a regular jungle on Earth. Oh my fucking oh my god. god, we're on uh, Earth. Holy crap. This is just like that, that Will Smith and Jaden Smith movie, After Earth. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, buddy. But Spoons, what the fuck, man? You knew? Yeah, I knew. Just like that I should have beat the shit out of you some more. Just for a little bit. I, I was trying to like, I was trying to tell Ani. Okay. Trying to tell everyone. Ani, wait, so you knew too? Alright, yeah, every, everyone blame Ani. As usual, Ani. That's 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 strike two, Ani. What <laughs> <laughs> oh was strike uh, one? Uh, you know, Ani. I'll be honest. This is strike four right here, buddy. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, he's in the. You're you're worse than the dugout. <laughs> Uh, Carmen and Percival, uh, run over to you on Gus's back, and Gus kind of nuzzles against you, Eugene, and Percival hugs your leg and says, Pappy, it's okay, we're, you're normal now, we're, we're together, that's what matters. We're yeah, back home. no longer Italian, you're normal. We're, we're back home. Eugene sits on top of Gus. Ah, oh, man. So, guys, we're back this at might, square one. This might one. be a weird change of pace, but why don't we go destroy New York? <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't mind it right now. Let's just go destroy New York. Let's just go, can, just go can, cast some spells and destroy New York. Take smash, smash, smash cut to us destroying New York. <laughs> smash uh, cut to before you go to destroy New York, York page, uh, <laughs> Eugene, right this, this tree that you crushed earlier, the trunk of this tree, which is still intact, it starts oh, yeah. to laugh. No, <laughs> no. no way. <laughs> Who, I know who's that here? laugh. Who's here? And a face appears on it. It is a red hobgoblinoid face, and the trunk changes into a short red hobgoblin wearing a fedora and a jacket, and Jack Racket says, Hey guys! You little motherfucker! Jack Racket, what the hell Honey, are you turn into a dead head? bear. I'm I gonna him. drop you on him. I hit him with a fireball. Uh, okay, uh, he's right next to you, but you can do that if you want. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, God. Get back up. Why are you here? Why are you here? What the fuck do you want? Ah, uh, because Th Thar's Dune wants me to kill you. Oh. I've been following you around anyway, and, uh... Oh, wait, who's that? He points behind you. Who's who? Who's I what? bet there's no one behind him. Look behind you, I swear there's something behind nope, you. No, I bet there's there's no one back there. Okay, no, it's really okay, cool. how about, how about really only cool. one Look of us you. looks... All right, one, only one of us will look and de will describe. Everyone else, keep your eyes on this fucker, okay? Yeah, I'm not turning I'll, around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look. All right, I don't care if I'm being gonna be called gullible. I've been through called much worse. All right, I turn around and look. You look behind you, and you see standing behind this group is Frito Misto, Doctor Glass, Bubba <clears throat> Venus, and Simon Grinter, the doctor, holding a chain around the neck of Hugo the Sasquatch. 
Okay, oh. guys, uh, you can turn around. There's no one back there, right? Yeah, no, there's lots of people back there's here. There's no one back there. Go, there's got to be no one back there, right? No, you're gonna right. you're gonna want to take a look at this, guys. There's Wait, a lot of people Spoons, back here. here's the thing. You stay forward. I'll turn around next. Okay. And then I turn <laughs> around. Okay, I'm staying forward. Oh, you're Spoons. I'm gonna, Spoons, Ani, I think it's it's time for you to turn around. Ani, wait, no, Ani. Ani, you next. Like, we do, get, just to get the full trust of the group, because I know Spoons is pretty stubborn. Ani, okay. turn around. Okay, I, I turn around. Uh, yeah, Spoons, you're gonna want to see this. Yeah, Spoons, what? turn what? around. It's, it's kind of much. It's We're all turn around. around. Now you just look weird not being turned around, so just turn around. Okay, well, okay. I turn around. Yo! Wow! 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 If you let the fucking monkeys out! <laughs> 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 